Hello, welcome back. This is Dr. Maria Zizian, and today we will be discussing metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome also has other names such as syndrome X and also this metabolic syndrome, but metabolic syndrome is the most widely used term. It is actually a relatively new term, although first it was introduced in early um, 20th century, but then it resurfaced in the 1970s, and since then it's been gaining more and more uh, widespread use. Metabolic syndrome in the medical world is used to coin pre-diabetes. However, now with so many uh, studies looking into it, it's actually much more than just prediabetes. Although, yes, prediabetes is one of the way to call metabolic syndrome. So, what is metabolic syndrome? There are several criteria for metabolic syndrome that are widely accepted nowadays, and those are first is waist circumference. Waist circumference is extremely important, and I believe that it should be measured essentially in every patient who who is at risk for metabolic syndrome or who appears to be overweight as it does carry a lot of predictive medical significance. And the criteria for uh, metabolic waste is more than 40 inches in men, and that's 202 centimeters, and more than 35 inches in female, which is 88 centimeters, and this is in the United States. It actually varies in different countries by a few inches. The waist uh, circumference uh, really also has a correlation with a uh, central adiposity, as we call it, which is the level of fat inside of your body. And as a surgeon, um, operating on the um, this skinny uh, obese people is always a challenge because there are people who whose body the whole body is essentially skinny except for their abdomen where they store all the fat and then uh, when they're having emergent appendectomy or gallbladder removal you are really fighting and plowing, plowing through a lot of fat uh, that is in a way and those are patients which are uh, the patients with central uh, adiposity and um, they are the ones with this weight uh, circumference and unfortunately this type of distribution of fat throughout the body is more detrimental to our health than uh, if it were more um, uniformly distributed throughout the body. So that's one criteria. The second criteria is high triglyceride level and triglycerides are actually fats in our bodies and uh, the level of triglyceride increases when we eat uh, fat in our diet, especially unhealthy fats or if we drink a lot of alcohol, um, eat a lot of uh, sugary snacks, etc. because all of that is converted into uh, triglycerides and stored in our fatty cells. The um, next criterion is um, the high density lipoproteins. What is a lipoprotein? Briefly, lipoprotein is a combination of triglyceride, cholesterol, and protein. And there are different types of lipoproteins, and I'm sure you have heard of them, HDL, LDL, and VLDL. So HDL is called a good cholesterol and when you have HDL that is low and the number is less than 40 in men and uh, less than 50 in women, um, then that is also a one of the criteria for um, metabolic syndrome. Um, the next one is hypertension or high blood pressure and uh, the cutoff here is 130 over 85. Uh, also, that includes people who are already on blood pressure medications. It is interesting that sometimes talking with patients, people say, no, my blood pressure is perfect. I am not, I don't have high blood pressure. I'm not hypertensive. And then you look that they're taking a lot of blood, uh, blood pressure medications. So basically their blood pressure is controlled with medications. What it means is that they do have high blood pressure. It's just thankfully controlled with medications. So um, basically, if you have high blood pressure, more than 130 over 85, or if you are on blood pressure medications, then um, you 
also that criterion also fits you and finally the fasting sugar more than 100 also is considered a, a criterion because it also um, conveys the insulin resistance so why is it important why do we want to focus on metabolic syndrome in functional medicine especially the goal is prevention a lot of times prevention is very difficult because it's essentially too late and patients that we see already have variety of chronic diseases that they have had for years however prevention of worsening is the way to start and ultimately reversal of diabetes that is the goal so that is why metabolic syndrome is a um, relatively good place to start why do i say relatively because the goal in functional medicine is to diagnose people even before they get metabolic syndrome so before they are pre-diabetic essentially and how do you find find that out about uh, your patient about an individual there are various ways to find out and some of them of course are lab tests when somebody presents with only slightly elevated glucose that's when it needs to be looked at additional uh, criteria or additional uh, uh, data that is used in functional medicine is also genetic data that also tells us who are and who are the people who are more susceptible to um, developing diabetes so but what happens with why is metabolic syndrome bad metabolic syndrome is bad because first of all it leads to uh, cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular disease again those horrible players such as heart attacks and strokes so and uh, that is really the uh, major killer um, of uh, population in developed countries and that is why a lot of our efforts are focused on prevention of heart attacks and strokes um, next is of course metabolic syndrome if untreated ultimately turns into type 2 diabetes and we would like that not to happen obviously because type 2 diabetes by itself would greatly increase the risk of other chronic diseases including of course cardiovascular diseases so it almost feels like a circle and i'm talking about the same things because everything is related if you have certain criteria that lead to metabolic syndrome and then it turns into diabetes then diabetes in turn worsens all other chronic conditions and that is why now we are in this circular um, or rather uh, some uh, vicious circle of one disease making the other disease worse so what other diseases come into play if uh, metabolic syndrome is untreated well fatty liver non-alcoholic fatty liver and again as a surgeon i uh, see that a lot uh, we see sometimes very fatty liver so you can really see it with your eyes this level of fat um, on the liver a look of unhealthy liver and what happens when liver is unhealthy when liver is unhealthy that means that it can't perform its functions well which is protect you from toxins and uh, and um, also be efficient in uh, metabolizing many 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 medications food and substances that you eat so um, liver dysfunction is a main issue it's a major issue and liver dysfunction could be different it could be just a mild fatty disease or could be a full-blown liver cirrhosis that could require a transplant next is um, kidney disease which also is a condition that again has that vicious cycle with high blood pressure because high blood pressure could lead to kidney disease and kidney disease leads to more high blood pressure uh, and they could have different triggers so kidney disease and high blood pressure could also have separate triggers and also they can trigger each other so that's a complex relationship there um, and kidney disease again it's another major um, uh, detoxification uh, organ uh, in our body and uh, it's uh, kidney is an organ of filtration 
and uh, kidney disease especially chronic kidney disease implies that you are unable to really cleanse your body of toxins and ultimately metabolize a lot of what goes into your body um, next is um, often underlooked sleep apnea sleep apnea is a very dangerous disease because it can lead to stroke to um, cardiovascular events such as high uh, such as heart attack by itself and also ultimately uh, respiratory issues uh, create and exacerbate your existing condition so sleep apnea is definitely not something that should be taken lightly um, in in one um, other consequence of uh, metabolic syndrome is actually increased clotting of the blood and that is actually not well known but the studies have shown that in metabolic syndrome and um, in diabetes you do have increased clotting of the blood and that can lead to blood clots and what happens if you have blood clots if you develop blood clots or more prone to blood clots then you can have deep venous thrombosis or dvt and uh, you can ultimately um, also have pulmonary embolus um, and ultimately again saying repeating myself and that could lead not only to um, stroke but ultimately it could lead to untimely death so that's why as we start from metabolic syndrome which seems sort of a lighter version of diabetes uh, my message is that i'm trying to convey that it is not a lighter version of diabetes it is disease unto itself it should be taken seriously and i view it almost as a last call uh, or last warning before a full-blown diabetes um, sets in thank you very much for watching until next time